If you are new to our channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Well, Holly, let's go to the IB Organics 3 in Plant Guard Hotline and bring in our next guest. Now, Tess, is, Tess Brzezinski is the founder, head educator, and cultivator at the Fungi Freights Urban Farm and Environmental Studio. Uh, she's well educated in uh, science and many things, and she continues doing research on micro -medi mediation in the city of Detroit, and she's an environmental project manager. Welcome to the program. Hi, thank you very much. Well, thank you for taking time out of your day to teach all of us, Holly, myself, and all of our listeners, more about mushrooms. Of course, I'm glad to be here. Thank you. Well, Tess, the, the first thing is, are, are mushrooms classified as a fungi, or is a fungi a different classification of mushrooms or something else? So, um, the answer to this question, actually, is all mushrooms are fungi. However, not all fungi are mushrooms, because mushrooms are considered the fruiting body or the reproductive system um, out of the fungi itself. So, it's kind of like an apple on the tree. Interesting. Interesting, yeah. <laughs> um, now, growing your own mushrooms, is it easier than many people realize? I know I've, we've seen kids at the garden center. We've seen the um, little spore that things. They put in the logs, yeah. They put in the logs. Um, is it as easy as, the, uh, as videos and pictures portray it to be? Um, I would think so. I mean, there, there are um, complexities that come along with it. Um, I think people just let me be a little intimidated because it's something... Um, so unfamiliar. It's not just like your average garden of vegetables you don't see all the time. But um, if you just, you know, do a little bit of research and reading, I think it's um, a concept that's easily enough to grasp um, to do it on your on your own. So it, it, growing mushrooms is far different than planting a tomato. There is some uh, environmental conditions in which a mushroom needs in order to grow correctly. Can you go over some of the, the criteria in which if we're going to grow them, uh, let's say in the backyard, in a log, that what we need to know before we go buy spores and drill them into a log? Absolutely. So um, they do so, um, it's called a plug spot, and it's an already inoculated um, dowel rod, and that's what you would use to inoculate a log. However, um, yes, there are some conditions, um, moisture regimes and temperatures, um, to um, correctly grow the mushroom. So you kind of want to have it um, off, elevated off the ground, maybe um, against a shed, keep it moist, um, watering it, you know, the log, like every couple weeks. You want to keep moisture within the, um, the wood itself so the mushrooms have um, enough moisture to grow. And keeping them kind of relatively warm, they can survive throughout the winter. Um, and then it takes about a year for them to fruit out of the log. So there are some things to keep in mind, and there's a lot of books out there on cultivation that will go over it thoroughly. Okay, can we, um, I don't know if you're on speakerphone, but if you are, could you take us off? There's some feedback. Um, it's actually not on speakerphone. Oh, okay. Now, um, I, I, I want to I go back to what she said about the inoculation. Now, for people who are unfamiliar with that term, does that mean that the spores are in a, in, a, in a state in which, in the proper conditions on that, that dowel rod, that they will sprout? Or what does inoculated uh, spores mean? Um, so, yeah, they are already, um, the spores have already um, gotten to their vegetative structure, which is mycelium. So the dowel rod will actually contain um, mycelium, which is a vegetative um, form. It's kind of like the root structure of the, um, of the mushroom itself. And so that's um, um, already in that state, and inoculating means just inserting it into the log itself. From from there, it will um, spread through the log and eventually fruit. So when we talk about, and, and it's been said in, in a lot of the survival programs you see on, online, on TV, that uh, when you go, uh, you have to know your mushrooms if you're going to go foraging in the woods. Otherwise, um, it's either do or die, uh, unless you know what it is. How, how accurate is that statement? <laughs> well, there's a quote um, some of us, like mushroom people, say, um, all mushrooms are edible, some only one. Yeah. And I would say it definitely is very important to, um, to know your mushrooms if you are foraging. There's many um, edible mushrooms that have look-alike mushrooms um, that contain toxic properties that can make you really ill. So 
Um, the best thing to do if you want to like get into foraging is maybe um, look up a local organization. Um, in Michigan, where I'm from, we have the Michigan Mushroom Hunters Club. There's also, also NAMA, the North American Mycological so um, Association. Get a good field guide um, before you go in foraging for your, um, you know, for your edible mushrooms. Whenever we decide to in, uh, get some mushrooms to inoculate and put in logs, is there a go-to that you would recommend, Holly and myself and our listeners, that this is a good starter uh, in order to in, understand the procedure and the process in which uh, to, to grow mushrooms, or are all of them basically the same plant, har uh, grow, harvest, or is there some easier than others? Um. Well, for the logs specifically, the shiitake goes really well um, um, in logs, and I think that's what most um, people go to um, for log cultivation because they're um, saprophytic and they um, digest the wood really well. Um, also, the oyster mushroom is a very good beginner um, mushroom because it's resilient and tends to do very well um, in many conditions of cultivation not you don't have to really be so sterile or in a lab because that species is pretty resilient and can survive we see well. we see these kits that we can buy at the garden center it's a box and you have to follow a certain procedure and you get button mushrooms and if you let them go they they grow larger how is that different than the growing in the logs uh, which is better um i wouldn't say one or the other is better just depending on your situation um, the ones that I think you're talking about in the bag, that is just um, a mush, you know, the, the mushroom is growing on a different material. So there's a lot of um, those kits that are in a bag, and it's really nice because you don't need a lot of space, where when you're doing log cultivation, you need more space um, just because of the difference in size. So I think it's just about preference and um, what kind of environment you're working with. Okay, and um, what is Fungi Freight? That's the organization you're associated with. What makes them different? What is it? So um, Fungi Freight is an urban mushroom lab and educational breeding ground, um, along with cultivating fungi for food, uh, medicine, and remediation. We um, do our best to educate the community on the beneficial properties mushrooms have and how they can be incorporated with our everyday life. Um, so just educating um, the community on a food source that is highly nutritious and um, pretty secure and can add more vitality to the community through um, using it as a food, using it medicinally, and um, for remediation purposes. I want to go back and revisit the, uh, the foraging for mushrooms and, and I, uh, trying to identify uh, there and to, to be clear on what you said, there's no real legitimate slash guideline available uh, to determine. Hey, I found this mushroom in the backyard in the back forty in the woods. It looks X Y Z, so I know it's edible. There's not really. You have to understand that, correct? Uh, well, or is um, it? all about practice. So if you do find a mushroom you think it looks like you know an edible mushroom that you're kind of familiar with. You can go to your field guide. Um, there's something you can do. It's called taking a spore print. Um, mushrooms have their own, like, fingerprint, so to speak, and it's kind of hard to describe how to do this all, um, over the uh, phone, so to speak. But um, you can take a spore print. A lot of them have different color spore prints. So you have a mushroom, say it looks like another mushroom that's poisonous, but they have different color spore prints. Um, you can take the sport print and maybe um, cancel out some of those like um, things via sport printing. And if you um, look that procedure up, it'll explain very well how to do it. And it's a pretty easy um, way to identify mustard mushrooms. Well, I'll, I'll ask you this because Holly and I, we were talking about, you know, you coming on the program and, and we ask questions to our guests that we do not know the answer to and that's why we bring experts in like you. What is the difference between a normal mushroom and a psychedelic mushroom? We, we hear the word psychedelic when we hear about the 70s and, and rock bands. And all. What is the actual definition between the two? So a psychedelic mushroom... Um obviously takes you on a spiritual or a trip, so to speak, and 
Um, this happens, um, usually the mushrooms are from the psilocybe genus, and these mushrooms contain um, a property known as psilocybin. Um, when you ingest the psilocybin, um, your body breaks it down um, into psilocin via dephosphorylation, and the psilocin is a psychoactive compound, and it molecularly mimics serotonin, so then it is able to attach to your serotonin receptors and undergo neurogenesis, open up new neurological pathways, and in induce like neuron, new neurons to grow within your brain. But um, yeah, that's the, the basic difference is they contain a psychoactive compound known as um, psilocybin. Okay, great. Um, so how can we find out more about you and your organization? Um, I do have a website, um, www.fungifreights.com. Um, I'm on Instagram, the social media, Instagram, Facebook. If you just type in Fungi Freights, um, it should come up. And I'm also um, working on a Kickstarter right now. I just launched a Kickstarter to kind of kick um, this community educational mm -hmm. breeding ground into play. So I have that fundraiser going on as well. Well, Tess, we greatly appreciate you taking time out of your day to educate Holly, myself, and all of our listeners uh, on mushrooms, fungi, and, and, and understanding how we can grow them in our own home and on our, on our own property. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. Thank you for checking out the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show. For more, go to the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com for full link in studio video and podcast replay of season one. Season 2 underway and added weekly. Tweet us at TWVG Show or hashtag TWVG to be part of the program.